You mentioned your, your Mexican wife. So I, I get comments on this channel. I've been getting comments lately because I've been doing videos about where I would live in Mexico on $1,000 a month, on a $1,000 a month budget. What, what cities would I choose? And I'm getting these comments like, why would you make videos about living in Mexico on $1,000 a month when it takes like $2,700 a month to get legal residency? You need an income of $2,700 a month for residency. But you are a perfect example of someone who came to Mexico did not qualify for residency in any way. However, what you did is you met a nice Mexican woman and married her and you got legal residency that way. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and again, when, look, I mean, I'll tell you the story. I, I've said the story many times before. When I came here, um, I, I had no choice. And I mean, like really back in the day, things were more strict. And so when they were more strict, I really didn't have a choice. I had just a few choices, you know, to pick from, which was, you know, just leave the country and come back. You know, no big deal. You know, people do that all the time. What is it? The, the visa runs. But I, I, that was expensive, believe it or not, even for me. Um, I had to do that anyway because my visa had expired. You know, I was here for, for a minute with uh, my expired visa. But anyways, um, yeah, I had to choose uh, to get married because there was no other option for me. I did not qualify, you know, uh, through financial solvency. I think I can, I'm not going to get a, a work visa, you know, all these things. I didn't have any options back then. So, yeah, basically, you know, um, I talked to Christian and I said, hey, look, I'm in this predicament. You know, can you help me out? And she's like, yeah, of course. You know, I thought you would never ask, you know, to, to get married. You know, but we got to do it for real. And I'm like, oh, really? You want to actually get married to me? All right, let's do this. So I kinda, it really worked <laughs> out. It was great. Um, but, yeah, you know, I got lucky in that sense, you know, where, you know, that's the route I had. But, again, you know, there are other – I had that same option, you know, whether, you know, I was with her or somebody else. But that is an option, believe it or not. Um an illegal option. Now, the thing is that with the years, as the years have gone on, you know, where we stand today, it's a lot easier, you know, for you to move out here. And just because of, you know, a lot of- Why do you say that? Oh, because a lot of the videos that, you know, I've made, um, I've been interviewing, uh, you know, Jose Novella, which is a lawyer that I interview on the channel a lot. Um, I think you interview, right? You know, you're your own lawyer. Um, we do research, yada, yada, yada. Anyways, it's out there. The, things have changed. And so now it's not the same, you know? Um, so for example, when you say, Hey, um, I want to move to Mexico, but I don't, you know, and you say a thousand bucks a month. Yeah, it's great, but I don't quali qualify financially. It's like, yeah, but it's okay. You know, there's other ways in which you can qualify. Number one, <laughs> a lot of people asking this, a lot of ask, a lot of people that are asking for the thousand dollar a month budget are people that are on a fixed income, which are retired. Well, guess what? If you're retired, all you got to do is prove you're retired. You don't got to prove financial solvency. You know what I mean? So a lot of people don't know that, but that's one way to do it. Another way to do it, um, you know, with through um, the whole pandemic situation that we had, um, the whole immigration thing has, you know, kind of like um, been more open. So therefore, if you, you know, I forgot what it's called, the residency program or what have you, but basically um, every six months they are renewing this new program that allows people to you know, just basically, if you've been living in Mexico and you have a few stamps on your passport because you've, you know, been living in Mexico and you've just been doing visa runs, that qualifies you enough, you know, for you to get your re temporary residency. I and think what you're talking about is the regularization program. And basically what that is, is, uh, well, there was the regularization program before COVID. But during COVID, they added, added something else to it, where if you come here, you get like a 180 day permit. Well, if that permit is expired, well, then you can go through this regularization process to get temporary residency without proving any financial requirements. So like Jose said, there are other ways to do it. There's humanitarian visas, there's uh, getting a work permit, there's qualifying via marriage, there's qualifying by having a child in Mexico, even if it isn't to a Mexican citizen. And th there's other ways as well. So there's a long list of ways that you can get legal residency without going through the financial route. It's just Correct. like the financial route is the most common way people go. It's the easiest way. What I like to tell people is just a way to buy your way in. I mean, which that's really what it is. You know, it's just proving, <laughs> hey, I got enough money to buy my way in, which you can do in any country. Um, but again, there's a lot of people out there that are finding out that um, even through family, you know I mean? They might have family, you know, or, you know, you know, whether it's in the U.S. or in Mexico. Um, and so just through bloodline, you know, they can do it as well. So there's many ways to do it. And uh, the, the, the simplest way to do it, which is the way that a lot of people still do it and, and the way I was doing it, which is go on visa runs. You can live in Mexico on a tourist visa perpetually because that's the way that the law are kind of set up. So 
if that's the only visa you can get, well, that's the only visa, you know, you're allowed to be here in, but it's not, it doesn't mean you're here illegally or it doesn't mean that you can't, you know, rent a place or live here or any of those things. You know, I mean, it means that you can't open up a bank account. It means that you can't, you know, do certain things that you would be able to do with a temporary residency, but that's it. You know what I mean? I, you know, I'm glad you're bringing this up because there is a lot of fear mongering out there and there's no reason to have fear mongering again, you know, there's other countries out there like where, you know, Southeast Asia, where they're very, very strict. OK. And they are deporting people and they're doing things like that. And people still go out there. No problem. And they're not, you know, they're not complaining. So why here, Mexico, that is such a strong partner to the USA and Canada. And you know what I mean? Like, again, Mexico wants Americans and Canadians out here. So why, you know. And Mexico did go through a phase, like I think it was last year, that they started cracking down on people who were doing these 180-day border runs. Uh, however, it seems that they've since relaxed that because it's it's been causing a lot of problems that they didn't foresee, and it seems like they've more so gone back to how it was. But I would say if you can get residency, if you can qualify for it in one of the many ways, do it. But as of right now, you can do the 180 day border runs and that is perfectly legal 